everyone, and welcome to Canto Conversations. My name is Teresa Wankin, and I'm your host for this session. Canto Conversations is a series of webinars that brings together regional and international experts to discuss COVID-19 and its impact on the Caribbean ICT sector. The ICT industry is crucial for governments, businesses, and citizens. As we stay informed about the virus, remain productive, and communicate in a virtual world. More and more organizations are working from home, and there is an exponential rise in the demand for data as video calls, client meetings, and team briefings become the new normal. At the heart of these communication networks are internet service providers. And today, we are going to discuss some of the funding opportunities available to Caribbean ISPs. We're very excited to have as a first guest on Canto Conversations, Shailan Osepa from Internet Society. We're also honored to have in the audience the Honorable Favar Williams, Minister of Science, Energy and Technology in Jamaica. Minister, we know you're very, very busy with Jamaica's COVID fight, and we just want to say thank you for joining us this morning. You're welcome. Before I introduce Shonan, I want to just go over the format of this webinar. Shonan will speak for around 20 minutes, and then we'll have some questions answered. I'm encouraging you to send your questions via our Zoom chat, and to please mute your microphones. It's not necessary we'll be taking our questions via the chat. So, Without any much ado, I'm going to start. Shuram, welcome to Canto Conversations. Thank you, Teresa. It's a pleasure and honor. Yes. So tell us, who is Shuram Osepa? Okay, let me let me um, okay let me proceed then with my presentation because then I have it um, everything um, embedded into the presentation. First of all, it's a pleasure and honor for us to be here and to give a contribution to the development of the internet in the Caribbean. It's not just about to give a presentation, but we like to give a contribution to the development of the internet in the, in the Caribbean. So um, basically what I'd like to do is to, to answer your question. If you don't mind, I'll proceed um, anyway with the presentation. So I'll highlight, um, let's say, a few things that I'm going to talk about. Who is your servant? <laughs> Then I'll be highlighting what is um, Internet Society and what we are doing. And then I'll focus on the support mechanisms that we have in place with respect to COVID-19. And there will be opportunity for you to ask questions as well. So um, coming back to answer your question, your servant, um, basically my background is um, in electrical and telecommunications engineering. engineering. I did study in the in the Netherlands, then I did some business administration as well, and I have a master's degree in regulations and policy as well. Um, work experience, remember, I'm not going to focus much on this because this is not the focus, the focus is more on, on substance. But given that you did ask me, I had to, I had to do this. Um, my work experience, um, presently I'm the director of Caribbean Affairs and development for internet society previously um, more or less the same role as the manager of regional affairs for the latin america and caribbean bureau i used to work at ICANN as well where i was the regional relations manager for the caribbean and before let me say i went to international organizations i used to work at the at the regulator in the netherlands and police i was there the policy advisor and um, also department head and, we, and I started my career as a network designer as the, at the incumbent operator, UTS Hotel in Curacao. And my areas of interest are internet governance, um, internet economy development in small island development states, cybersecurity, and not to um, forget natural disaster mitigation. And this is the reason why we are talking about this. Normally, um, if you look in the Caribbean, we we focus a lot on 
uh, not before, because I mean, we do have challenges with respect to natural, natural disasters. And presently we do have a kind of a disaster for the whole world. So in one way or the other, we need to find a way how to mitigate, how to address these um, issues as well. So let me, let me move on with explain to you as well regarding um, internet society, what we are doing, and we do also have a foundation. So I'll highlight uh, very briefly what we are doing. If you look at the internet society, why does internet society care? I mean, there are a lot of things going out there why does Internet Society care? If you look what we're doing, Internet Society is focusing on, on we would like to see what we, what we say, an open, globally connected, trustworthy, and secure internet for everyone. So everything we do in one way or the other has a connotation with, um, we would like to see open internet. This does mean we don't want to see an internet where people, for example, in given country, they don't have access to the internet. When we talk about globally connected, um, we would like to see, if you see presently, 52% of the, of the global community is connected to the, to the internet. So we still have 48% that is not connected to the internet. So we have all kinds of smart ways how we're trying to get the other 48% other um, connected. And with trustworthy and secure, if people lose trust in the internet, then we have a big problem. Because currently, um, and even before, let's say COVID-19, uh, more than 95% of the global economy is being conducted over the internet. So just imagine what would happen if people lose trust in the internet. So that's in very high level, basically, um, internet, society, internet society's focus. And we, we are focusing on what we call three strategic goals. Everything we do, we would like to, um, we are focusing on build, how, how we can build, enhance the internet, how we can promote the internet, and also how we can defend it. That is why when we see certain, let's say, um, threats out there, for example, um, people sometimes talking about, um, they would like to see another kinds of kind of, of, of internet, then you will hear internet society's voice because we are here to defend the internet as well. So um, let me rush with you through the, um, some projects that we are working on presently. We, um, as I did mention before, everything we do, we, we are focusing on to build, to promote, and to defend the internet. And if, you, if we make like a deep dive, then we are, we did divide this into what we call eight areas, eight projects. So this year, everything that we're going to do, we are focusing on eight areas. The first one is what we call building community networks. As I did mention, globally, still 48% of the global community is not connected to the internet. If you look at traditional operators, they have been doing a great job, but still we do have underserved and rural areas that are not connected. So that is why we need to think in, about smart ways how we can get these communities connected. And within Internet Society, we have a project um, ongoing, which is called um, Community Networks. And uh, by doing this, we're trying to get, let's say, other, other communities connected as well. We are focusing on infrastructure, um, especially, let's say, um, ISPs. We're trying to help them to, uh, um, to to enhance their infrastructure and also to internet exchange points because they are very critical in having, for example, content very close to, 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 um, um, to, to the community and also to, ex to enhance the internet experience. So this is also another um, project that we are working on. So if you, if you see, I did put, for example, building community in yellow, and I did put also fostering infrastructure and technical community in yellow. The other ones, um, the other six projects that we are focusing on, for example, measuring the internet. A lot of times we are talking, but it's not always that we have real data to, um, to come with sound policies, how we should be dealing with challenges that we are facing in the Caribbean and elsewhere. So that is why Internet Society has been focusing, or will be focusing this year as well, how can we get more data with respect to 
the internet? How can we um, help, for example, policymakers and governments with, um, with, with key data in order for them to take sound decisions? So this is also one big area that we will be working on this year. Another project that we have this year is what we call promoting the internet way of networking. And what this does mean is, um, if you look the structure, how the internet um, functions nowadays, as I did mention, initially we, we are seeing some threats out there, but the internet is what it is based on its structure. It's very resilient, um, the internet itself, the internet um, structure. Um, for example, nowadays, a lot of people are using the internet, but the internet didn't break because it's very resilient. And when I'm talking about the internet, I'm not talking about maybe your server, server providers, provider providing you a kind of service. I'm talking about the, the infrastructure of the internet itself at the global um, level. And we would like to enhance it, enhance it and, and, and that's the way we are promoting this, um, the internet way of networking as well. We do have also another project that we are focusing on, which is called Securing Global Routing. And MANR stands for Mutual Agreed Norms on Routing Security. If you look at the internet, it has two main components. We do have what we call the domain names. For example, at Teresa.com, that would be a domain name. But the internet, it consists out of different what we call networks. And all these networks have to connect in one way, um, to the, uh, one way or the other to, to each other. So if, we, if you would like to go for network A to network B, then you, then you have to use a kind of what we call a route. And there are threats out there um, with um, hackers and others trying to break, for example, when people are trying to send traffic from one network to the other. And this particular project is focusing on how can we ensure that all these internet routes are secure, okay? We do have another, another project that we're focusing on as well, is on the encryption. And with encryption, basically what we're trying to do is to, um, to, to discuss with policymakers and governments and others, and also let's say um, ISPs, internet service providers, in order for them to promote encryption. Um, for example, if I would like to send the different information to you, Teresa, I don't want others, I don't want Jenny, for example, to intercept basically what I have been sending to you. And this, if, if this happened, then we have a big problem. Um, if, you, if you're using, for, for example, your credit card or other confidential, let's say, um, services, then we have a threat out there. So we do have a project focusing on encryption as well. And we do have also a project focusing on what we call increasing time security. Everything that we do on the internet, um, in one way or the other, it is related to, to time. For example, if you would like to set up a VPN, um, virtual private network, if you don't, set, if you don't manage to set it, set it up quickly, then you may have someone trying to intercept your traffic. So you see, everything has to do with time as well. So we, we do have also a project focusing on time, on time security. And the last project that we are focusing on, that they, they are in total eight, is what we call leading by example with open standards and policy. If you, if you, if you reach, for example, uh, a traffic intersection and you see this kind of light, it just, it, it brings, confusion. We don't know what it is. And this is the exactly thing with the internet. The internet too, it has, it, 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 it functions based on some, let's say what we call um, standards. So if you may come with, a, with, with another standard that doesn't fit in, in the standard that we call this thing, the internet, then we have a problem as well. And internet society through what we call the internet engineering task force, is promoting all these kind of um, open standards. So that's it in, 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 a, in a nutshell, basically what Internet Society is doing. We do also have a foundation. This was um, formed um, last year, um, February, because we have seen during the years that, that there are areas where, let's say the existing Internet Society cannot, cannot, cannot manage or non-manage, cannot deal with, because they are not part of our uh, mandate. So that is why um, since last year we have an Internet Society Foundation 
which is focusing on specific area that normally the internet society organization cannot address. And given that we are here in the Caribbean, for example, I'll focus on the last one here, disaster, for example. Um, and this, um, this is basically due to the work that we have been doing in the Caribbean, discussing with, with um, um, internet society leadership, and they decided to put this also as part of the, of the work of the foundation. Because back then, um, we had a few challenges with disasters in the Caribbean, for example, but we couldn't address these because we didn't have any um, official um, mechanism in place within the organization. But now with the Internet Society Foundation, we are able to address these. Still, policies are being set in place, but in one way or the other, we can, we can, we can, we can discuss this. So let me, let me focus now a bit more on the, because here we can have the, the, the conversation. Um, yeah. The support that we that we would like to do of to give during let's say um, this whole COVID thing going on, um, basically within the internet society when we talk about support during COVID nineteen, we are focusing on on three areas. We are focusing on the internet server providers, the ISPs. We are focusing on the internet exchange points, and we are focusing on community networks. And the reason for this is, if you look at internet um, server providers, ISPs, they are very critical in providing um, internet services. Remember, we are the internet society. We are, we are not the aviation society. So everything that we're doing, in one way or the other, it should have, it should have as a relationship with, with the internet. So, and there are two, um, we, we, we have, let's say, these three areas that we're focusing on. And the way how we're doing this is by providing expertise. So we do have expertise. In, if we don't have that particular expertise in-house, we do have expertise in what we call the internet society community. So we are attached to a lot of communities where we do have experts that can give also a contribution. So the, the first thing that we do, we, we can provide, we can help with, with expertise from within the organization. The second thing that we can do is also to assist with, with equipment. So for example, if, if, if an IXP, for example, ISP, um, and I would like to be very clear on this, when we talk about support, the first organizations that we are looking at are those who need it the most. So we are not talking about the big giants, multi-billion dollar organizations. They can help themselves. We are focusing on, let's say, smaller ISPs, those who, who cannot help themselves. They, are, they, they really need some support. And then, as I did mention, um, let me focus now on ISP and then I go to the other ones then we can help with expertise and also with equipment. We do have within the International Society a lot of other organizations that are working with us and what I would call, let's say, our partners, and they are always willing, able, eager to support as well with regard to um, with, um, equipment and expertise. So we, we team up, we work together, and by doing that, we, we are trying to assist the region. I'm talking now about the Caribbean, but this is the general approach for other regions um, across the world as well. If you look, the other one is what we call the internet exchange points. This um, internet exchange points are also very critical when it comes to, to, um, to, in, to the internet because we keep, let's say, local traffic local, so traffic that is not meant to, be, to go outside of the country, we can keep it um, um, local. Then we have much, what we call, um, um, then we can improve the speed of, of, of the operation. We can, um, with less delay. And also a very important area when it comes to um, internet exchange point is, for example, e-government. Governments can use local internet exchange points to um, also to um, develop their let me call it e-government um, platforms in order for them to um, 
have the local traffic um, um, kept, um, keep, um, kept local. But in addition to that, also to provide services um, in a much um, faster way. Because now they don't have to send the traffic all the way to Miami or New York or other parts of the world, but they can just um, use local internet exchange points. Also here, what we have been doing right now, we do have requests. Um, I'm not going to mention the, na the names of the countries, but we do have requests from two countries in the Caribbean um, that we are working with um, to enhance, to improve, let's say, their IXPs given that they, they are seeing, um, let's say, increase of traffic, but um, they need some support. So we, we are helping them in that regard. So again, with expertise and with equipment. The third one, community networks, that's not that relevant as yet in the Caribbean. It will become, but presently it's not because right now we, we are having discussions with two countries in the Caribbean, but we don't have a community network um, deployed as yet. But if, if I can give an example, for, uh, for example, of Latin America, in Argentina, for example, where we have a community network, and, though, and that particular community has reached out to us because they, with the whole COVID-19, let's say, drama going on right now, what they have seen is that presently, um, especially the youth, children, for example, living in that particular community, they need to stay at home. So that this has um, put a given, let's say, um, um, pressure on the, let me, let me call it the, the infrastructure, because th this infrastructure, infrastructure was very simple, but now they need some enhancement um, with the technical infrastructure. So also in that particular case, Internet Society will be helping with um, with equipment, with router, with switches, whatever that is needed in order for us to, 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 to help them. So this is basically what the support that Internet Society is, 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 is providing during, let's say, the COVID-19 um, challenge that the whole world is, is facing. So as I did mention, again, we are the Internet Society. So everything that we do should have a connotation with the internet. So, and given that we don't have um, unlimited resources, we will be looking also um, case by case um, cases, like, like that, in order for us to assist. So those, those who need it the most, those are the IXPs, um, IXPs are community networks that we are, that we are working with in order for us to, um, to help them. Should, should, we, should we don't have, for example, that particular very specific expertise in-house, as I did mention, we are part of a wider community and we can always work with a wider community in order for us to give a contribution. Mm -hmm. So that's basically um, what we're doing. Okay. I, I think I'm in 20 minutes and then we can yes. uh, move on with the questions. Um, but over to you, um, Teresa, as the moderator. Thank you so much, Shannon. So, so there you have it. There is expertise and equipment assistance opportunities for ISPs, IXPs, and community networks. So, Shannon, I one of the questions that I want to ask is, how do IXPs, how do these stakeholders access this opportunity? How can they get help? equipment and expertise from internet society. Yes, um, I think as your main liaison for the Caribbean, they can reach out to me directly. My email address is there, osipa at isoc.org. Um, we haven't, um, I didn't mention this, but we haven't put, let's say on our website, um, this whole information in a, in a structured way or we're not promoting it as such. The way how we are doing it, this is more like um, by what I would call like direct marketing. So you have the liaison in the, in the different regions. For example, in my case, in the Caribbean, I've been reaching out um, to, to Canto, to Caribnot, to other, let's say, um, institutions in the, in the Caribbean. And by doing that, we are trying to help. So again, we don't have, as I did mention, we don't have, uh, a, a, a specific structure in place, 
we will be working with those who, um, who, 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 who need, let's say, the, the support the most. With them, we will be working and to see how we can, we can, um, we can assist them. So the first thing they should do is just contact me. My email address is there. And then we can discuss it and then we can see how we can, can help. Okay. So should I tell us, uh, so there's no criteria. You just have to be an operating ISP, ISP or a community network. Yes. Remember, as I did mention, we too, we don't have unlimited resources. So we are going to prioritize as well. Um, for example, um, for example, I'm not going to mention name, but for example, if a multi-billion um, ISP approaches us, then of course, I mean that's a challenge because we we, we would like we prefer to help another one, uh, let's say a small ISP that doesn't have those funds to to have themselves. You understand? But this doesn't mean that that we discriminate. We will discuss with, with them. We will see what the options are. We, we, we have a lot of, let's say, partners that we are working with as well. And by doing that, we, 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 we will always um, look for a way how we can give a contribution. So you will not hear me say, no, we, we are not going to talk to you, no. But let's discuss it and let's see how we can make the Caribbean better in this particular case. Okay, and the process, is it a simple process? How long does the application process take? Just Again, email to you. Yes. Again, it's 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 not. We, we know that we are in a in in, in, in a how do you call it, in a rush right now. We we need it right now. Um, for example, last week I got a request from one particular um, IXP in the Caribbean, and we are already working with them. So to identify what what they need, of course we need to verify verify with respect to. Um, transportation, given that um, still a lot of countries are locked down right now. So you may have a challenge. How are we going to send, let's say, equipment to those countries? Or maybe we should be looking at options. Maybe the, if they can buy those equipment, if they are available in their own country. So we, we will discuss this. We will reach agreement. How are we going to do this? But as I did mention again, the first thing, contact me and let's, let's discuss it. Okay, great. So I have a couple of questions, more questions for you. Um, does Internet Society have any statistics related to the increase of traffic during this crisis in the Caribbean? So um, next week, um, uh, um, Tuesday, for example, we're going to have another, and I would like to invite all of you who are here as well. It's another community, but we are all, all part of a big family. Uh, within the CITEL um, community, um, they had last week a uh, webinar focusing, a webinar especially for the Spanish speaking, um, for Spanish speaking Latin America, they had a webinar focusing on the real implications of, the, uh, of, 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 of what is going on right now um, um, with respect to the, to the internet. So we are going to, we had that last week, um, Thursday for, for Latin America, and we're going to have this um, coming Tuesday at 2 p.m. Trinidad and Tobago time um, for, for the Caribbean, for English-speaking Caribbean, and I'll be moderating that session as well. So in that particular session, we will be looking at some um, specific areas with respect to traffic increase. There are some myths out there as well. For example, there are people thinking, okay, the internet is going to break because everybody's working online. So all these we will be addressing next week uh, at CTEL. So um, Teresa, I will send you later on, let's say the invitation so that you can forward it to your community as well. But, but uh, if, if I can mention one particular country, Haiti, for example, I had conversation with them and they have, um, they have seen some increase in, 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 in traffic given that people are working online. Um, of course, that's the case in, 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 other, in other countries as well. But we would like, as I did mention, um, we would like to get first-hand information from those people who are working in those particular areas. We may guess things, but we would like to measure and have some substantial things that we can um, talk about. So um, we do expect, because everybody is working 
online now, so we, we do expect traffic increase. There is also another challenge that maybe I can address it right here. When we talk about internet penetration, not only um, from, from the Caribbean, but elsewhere as well, um, we have seen, for example, we have or we had countries indicating, for example, they have like 80% internet penetration, um, people are well connected. And right now we are experiencing something completely different. And it seems like a lot of these um, persons who were um, connected in one way or the other, they were using, let's say, um, free Wi-Fi at, at work, you know, or at public places. But in one way or the other, they don't have internet access at home, you know? And those who have, let's say, all those data plans, um, sometimes it's very expensive. They, 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 they just access the internet when they get a free um, um, a Wi-Fi. So this is also something that we should be discussing to get a better view regarding this, because um, in order for us to, 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 to know the real situation that is happening right now. We, we, we thought back then people were connected, but it seems like um, not all of them are connected. So that's another discussion that we need to, so that we need to have. I have a question for you, leading right from that. It's what assistance, and this will apply to the foundation especially, what assistance can be provided to students? What we're finding is many, many students do not have computers and internet access at home. And they are unable in this new virtual world right now, everyone is home to tune into most of the classes that their schools and all the other institutions are giving. So is there any, any room for assistance there? And how can, who can we talk to? Yes, um, we do. If you look at, let's say, at, at the objectives of the, um, of the foundation, I didn't, I didn't highlight, I just, I just went to the disaster. But we, we support, let's say, um, what we call support to the, our chapters, Internet Society's chapters, and also um, special interest groups. And we have, let's say, we can provide, let's say, small grants, um, let's say, from 3,000 US dollars all the way to 30,000 US dollars to, let's say, to, but this is more for the chapters community. We also do have one, the, the, the second bullet, um, community capacity building. Um, if you may have a smart I idea, because nowadays we, we are looking at that, if you may have a smart I idea, and this is more for the, let's say, for the innovation part, through the, um, the, um, the, the Internet Foundation, through, um, there are some opportunities for, um, for us to discuss that. I don't, I don't have right now, let's say, exactly um let's say um how do you call it there, there, there is not such thing like um exact criteria how, how they're going to measure that but i think what 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 they will be doing maybe i can share the um the context of the of the ceo of executive director of the foundation later on or i can i can approach them as well so if people have any particular um, concerned, they can. I can put you in contact with those with my colleagues at the at the Internet um, Foundation. But what we're doing right now is to look at some innovative um, ways of to get people connected. With respect to your question regarding computers and so on, I don't know the exact answer on that. So um, I can um, address, uh, let's say, or, or approach, let's say, our colleagues at, at, the, at the foundation, and then they can give a better view on that. So. What we're looking at right now is innovation. If you have, especially in this, in this COVID-19 um, regime, let it be like that. If, you, if you're thinking on a very innovative way of using the internet, again, the internet should be there in one way or the other, and then we can always discuss that. So I know you said that you couldn't share the, um, the companies with the IXPs, but can you tell us which two countries have been getting um, assistance from you all? 
So basically, you're just asking me the same thing, but in another way, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, because I think it's a good opportunity, especially for the smaller islands, yeah, to come together and approach no. internet society. So if you don't want to call the country name, I'm fine with that. It's a question, all right? I'm just kidding. We have Haiti. We have Haiti and also Barbados. Those are the two um, that we are working on with right now uh, with their IXPs, internet exchange points, to help them to enhance their, 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 their infrastructure. So those are the ones right now that did request. From the other ones, I haven't heard anything. Um, I mean, if, you, if things are fine, if you don't need any specific, um, let's say, assistance, that, that's, that, that's, that's fine as well, you know? So those who need it the most, and then we, we are able, willing to discuss with them how we can assist them. Okay, great. Um, we have another, um, I have another question here dealing with encryption. Has the cost of the encryption you recommended become more manageable for small service providers? And that goes back to one of your earlier slides and one of the pillars, you want to share some information on that? So if you, if you can you please repeat the question regarding um, encryption? What, what was the cost of encryption you recommend become more manageable for small service providers? Are you seeing the smaller service providers and their costs being more manageable over time? Yes, you don't, you don't have other option. If you don't, if you don't encrypt your, 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 your traffic, then, then you have a problem because, again, be it a big operator, a small one, medium one, whatever, if you don't encrypt your data, people would not trust you. So that's, that's the key message. Um, your clients, um, customers, whatever, they should trust you. They should trust if, if I get service from Teresa Telecom, for example, that I'm sure that what I'm getting, um, people are not, um, people are not able to get um, to to crack my information or to hack my information. So, you, you as even as a smaller IXP, you don't have other option. You need to think about how to encrypt your data. And with regard, I didn't focus much on that. With regard to manners, for example, we are also working with um, IXPs in order for them to sign a kind of a, let me call it agreement at which they, they will be promoting, let's say encryption. And we are working with them as well to, to make sure that they, that, they, that, that they are in compliance. So you, you don't have other option living in this particular era right now. You don't have other option. That's something that you just need to do. Okay. So um, I have one other question. Um, uh, do you have any educational outreach programs for the wider communities? So other than IXPs, community networks, and ISPs, do you have any other outreach program yes. that the region can benefit from? Yes, and even we do have some, we, we used to have an online system, online training program. We got a new colleague who is um, focusing and who has been enhancing this whole, um, let's say, um, online um, training system. So we do, we do, um, I can um, maybe provide you later on, let's say, um, some, some links that you can, sh that we can share with, with the, because all these people are in, in this particular community right now, that we can share with them. So yes, we, we are providing online trainings as well. Um, focusing on these eight areas and with the, with, the, um, with the foundation, if you may have a specific area, research area, especially working with universities that you would like to, get, to go in a given direction or, or, or to, um, how do you call it, to research a given challenge that we are facing, we are also willing to, to discuss that. So you the okay. answer yes. So I have one last question for you, Shannon. Um, operators have noticed an exponential spike in the demand for broadband services. In some instances, we have noticed that traffic in our networks has increased by 40% in the first week or lockdown in some countries. 
Can you give some views? What are your views on the strategies some governments and regulators can use to support the industry at this time? Um, again, when we talk about, um, because broadband is the way how you get access to the, to the I mean, that's the, that's the, how do you call it? The, um, the connection, the different connection to the, to the internet. It's very important, um, especially talking to governments that they understand what we call the three operational layers of the internet. You need to have telecommunication infrastructure in place to get internet access. It doesn't matter if the internet, um, um, how do you call it? It doesn't matter if it is a fixed, let's say, um, infrastructure, it's a mobile infrastructure, um, satellite um, infrastructure. You need to have a telecommunication infrastructure in place. So that's the first thing. Once we have that in place, then we go to the next level where we have what we call the, all the protocols, the domain name system, um, and so on. And on the, on, on, the, on the highest level, we have the applications. So the Google, the Twitter, and so on, and so on. So sometimes, especially dealing with policymakers, with governments, given that this particular distinction is not always clear to all of them, they may be focusing, for example, on a problem that we may have in the, let's say, let me call the second part of what I, as what I did mention, while that particular problem is not there, maybe it's on the application. I, I think what the, 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 um, the person asking the question wanted to get at is what type of strategies or best practices to manage that increase in demand yes. happening right now. So um, I know in some countries, um, the education ministries are trying to have all their online training at one time because should everyone log on at the same time, no matter how perfect our networks are, we will have problems. So uh, I think that's the question, Where, what kind of strategies can be implemented if we can ask people to maybe use Netflix from certain hours, and we don't want to go into that question right now because that might get us into trouble, but what are some of the strategies out there being used in some of the countries to ensure that the, um, the connection stays up and running during this high demand? I, I, believe, I believe we do have, let's say, smart people at, at operators as well. Yes. We do have smart people, we do have engineers, um, and sorry that I'm going to say it like this right now. Um, I think this is a great opportunity for all these smart, um, and people, please don't get me wrong on this, to all these smart engineers um, who are earning a lot of money for them to come together and think on strategies how we can solve the problem. So, um, because it's a, it's a technical problem. So that, 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 sh that should be solved. It, it's, it's very straightforward. If you do have a pipe, um, you don't you don't have more space in that particular pipe. Then you need to find a way how to 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 to, to give to, to to give more um, to broaden that, that that pipe. So that 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 simple is the is is the answer. So now I, I understand. Maybe you don't have equipment. Maybe you didn't plan to to upgrade your infrastructure. But these are technical discussions that we should have. Let's say then on on, on the technical level with all these engineers, and I'm sure that we'll, they will come with, it, with the best solution. Of course, and that's another conversation right now. What we're looking at is a, a way for the industry to get some kind of relief with what's going on right now and to ensure that the connectivity stays alive. I am going to give one last question, ask one last question. Can Belize, um, the country Belize, access these opportunities from internet society we do we do have great friends in belize so that should not be a problem so, so. okay great there you have it so we only have four minutes left and i wanted to ask the honorable minister if she has any question or any issue that she wants highlighted before we wrap up honorable minister Okay, 
Sorry, sorry. Hello? Hello, yes. Honorable Minister. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for staying on this series. Do you have any issue you want highlighted? It could make good conversation for our next topic. Well, first, let me say that um, um, I was pleased to have gotten the notice about this um, conversation this morning. Um, I listened well to all the projects that, um, that the organization is working on, um, promoting the internet way of networking, securing global routing, encryption, um, leading by example with the open standards and protocol, and then your support during the COVID-19. All of those topics are of interest to us, in particular, the encryption, because we are just um, uh, in the process of deploying encryption here in Jamaica, um, you know, in our government system. So that is a, is a, is a topic I'd love to hear more about in the future. Um, open standards is something we have embraced as well. Uh, not, I don't think it's very well understood. So that would be a topic, um, go forward topic. In terms of your support during COVID, um, I understand that you say that the, any, the ISP in need should um, give you a call and be in touch with you. I think it's, that's a very worthy um, initiative at this moment in time. I'm particularly interested as well in the community capacity building to understand um, what that is. And I share the um, concerns that, that you have as well with regards to uh, the access that persons have, especially now during this COVID period when we all have to be at home, shelter in place, work from home. Um, and there are students, I can tell you here in Jamaica, there are many, many students who have had to leave their institutions and go home and they do not have internet access or in cases where they do, they can't afford the data plan and so forth. Um, as a government, we've uh, engaged our telecom providers here to ensure that many, many, many of the websites that the students need to access are zero rated, meaning they do not have, they're, they're not charged for it, they don't have to have a data plan. And so we've, we've been able to broker that deal with our telecom providers. Additionally, we've roped in our cable providers as well to um, carry educational content because there are many persons, they will have cable, but they might not have internet and so on. So we, we've, we've patched together a network here to help our students while they're away from school to be able to get as best as possible the educational information that they need. So I'm saying all of this to say it's a, it's a great conversation this morning. I'm glad to be um, you know, linked in with, with this particular um, organization and I applaud the work that you're doing. Thank you so much, Minister. I thank you all for being a part of this conversation. Please join us on Thursday morning at 10 a.m. for a discussion on working from home how to maintain focus and stay productive. Our guest for this topic is Ian Blanchard from Caribbean Institute of Coaching and Leadership. You can also follow us on our social media handles. It's on your screen right now. Um, this has been broadcast on Facebook Live and YouTube, and you will also get a link to the video. Shonen information will also be forwarded to you all. Thank you all. Stay home, stay safe, and stay connected with Cantu. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shadan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Great session.